that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead with company worth keeping. Then I'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open. You'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Music, medicine, then some to talk, talk, talk to the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. Welcome to Talk of the Tavern. This episode's topic is Old Dog's New Tricks. We'll get to that in a couple minutes. First, let me introduce myself and my vices. I am smoking out of a uh, Canadian lumberjack? lumberjack pipe, Savinelli. And I've got it loaded with C&D Dark Cherry Cavendish. And I am uh, drinking Henry McKenna bourbon. Nice, smooth, low price, perfect for the tavern. Now, let's met, let the... Mm, mm. Sorry, nah, nah, nah. I looked at you to introduce you and pass it over to you. I got all choked up, man. It's, uh, I, I understand. You, I have that effect on... White guys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of weird fucked up superpower is that shit? <laughs> Being black. Joe says old dogs new tricks. Is this episode about elderly prostitutes getting on OnlyFans? It yeah, might... don't ruin it yet. <laughs> Spoilers, asshole. Ed, introduce yourself. What do you got? Hi, I'm Ed. I am drinking Pinot Noir. I am munching on these little cheese wrapped meat thingies, whatever the hell they are. <gasps> They're so good. good. Yeah. They're good. And since the wife isn't home, I'm smoking Marlboro Lights in the house, damn it. <laughs> He's such a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea? <laughs> okay. Uh, Andrea LaChat here. And, um,. Knitting a blanket because it's freezing. That's my vice. I got some sweet tea because that's what I do. And some cheese Pringles because yummy. That's right. That's right. Now, a couple things about the show. This is an adult show with adult humor and adult topics. We drink, we smoke, we swear, and we laugh at shit we probably shouldn't. If that's not your thing, I don't know. Come around when I'm writing and just clicking on the keys. I, uh... Let's see, what else we got here? Oh, I want to let everybody know who is listening to this in podcast. We have a live chat audience that is constantly giving us input. So you might hear us reading off their comments and their thoughts and their responses. For example, uh, Robert of Wicked Clever. You can find him at wicked-clever.com. Check out his games and books there. said, that's a great intro. Dave is drinking Johnny Walker Green not smoking tonight Ooh. and uh, apparently joe is partaking of elderly prostitutes on onlyfans.com apparently uh, okay oh also drinking lime sparkling water hmm oh <laughs> joe has made it clear he is not part of the live <laughs> audience he's actually pre-recorded um right so for those of you in chat we're going to read your comments and whatnot out on air, but only if they're relevant and entertaining. Please make sure it's at least one of the two. Both of them is better. Um, Robert says, just drank whiskey too fast. It is gone. It's the Irish in you. <laughs> what an Irishman is doing in you is none of our business. Let's move on. Uh, what kind of whiskey was it, though? You can't just say whiskey. That's really too broad. Now, yeah, the, what kind of whiskey? The, t- the topic... Old Dog's New Tricks. Maker's Mark. Okay, that's a reasonable one. Okay. Um, old Dog's New Tricks. Throughout my life, there are certain things I've wanted to do. And because life gets busy, I haven't necessarily done them. So there's been things that I've started doing recently. Uh, and there's other things that I started a few years ago, including this show right here. It's something I started in 2007 went live onto Pirate Internet Radio and got a... What is it when multiple places run your show simultaneously? Simulcast, not simulcast. Um, they do yeah. it with sitcoms where they put it on multiple channels. 
You know that's simulcast. Thing. No, not simulcast. It's uh, okay. Robert, help me out here. I know you know the word. Anyhow, and now we're syndicated. Syndicated. There we go. Um. Thank you, Andrea. Well done. <laughs> Robert got Cindy. Good for you. <laughs> I, I have not done Cindy. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, right. And now here we are. We, in 2012, oh, Ed, thank you. Ed's making me, <laughs> I want to drink something. How about a fucking toast? Here's what I'm going to say. Here's the opening toast. Here's to, once you're old enough, A, remembering that you wanted to do something. B, actually fucking going out and doing that mm. thing. Mm. Here's to that. Mm -hmm. Here. here. And because we like to drink, we're also going to make Cogsley, our little uh, show bot, give us a quote here. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Cogsley supplied us with Don't Be a Cunt by Kevin Crew. There we go. Always a good rule. Okay. Here, here. Here, So there we go. That's funny. Okay. <sighs> so now we, we discussed this a little bit before the show because Ed was like just shrugging going, meh. But we discovered there are things he's done now that he hadn't done before. Besides, you know, That he kind of had to learn to do. Right, right. The yeah. hard way. <laughs> and, yeah, it was. And learned you don't want to do it again, which is a fair right. thing for... No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Hmm, doesn't mean I want to. So, Ed, what's... Let's just go around and name one thing that we've done later in life that was a brand new skill set or creative outlet. Ed, what about you? Well, you thanks to your help before the show, I, I, I bought a house that needed some work. It was livable the way it was, but it could be made better. And I have learned a lot about carpentry work later in life. I mean, from your wife, because she's a fucking amazing carpenter. <laughs> from my wife. She's a hell of a good... Uh, but she can't do corners. You mean she like can't make corner cuts. Cut, cut the 45 she, degree angle thing? Yeah, she really? it, it loses her. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so, house? Drinking. What? You learned how drinking. to tr drink when you were? I learned how to drink later in life. Now, what's that mean? Well, growing up, you drank shit, right? This and was a good it one. wasn't until I was actually in my 40s that I discovered good wines. There are wines out there besides Boone's Farm Tickle Pink. I didn't know that. Who knew? <laughs> I don't think that relates to his fix-it-up house, but maybe it does. Maybe that explains why his <laughs> wife can't do corners. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with, like, putting down wood floors through your whole house. Oh, yeah. I, I've learned to do wood floors. I've learned to do trim. I've learned to, well, I knew how to do trim. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> welcome to the 70s. If you don't know what trim is, you're still pretty young. <laughs> yeah, I've learned quite a bit about woodworking later in life. How you doing? Mm -hmm. No, Andrea. What about you? Good night, Robert. This. Thank you for stopping in. Come back and Hi, see Robert. us. But before you go, Good Robert, night, Robert, what's one thing that you've learned how to do in your more recent years of life? So Andrea just held up her knitting. It it was after you know I, when I was already in my forties mm -hmm. that I learned how to knit. So I've been doing this for just a couple of years. I figure after 40s later in life. It is, yeah. Oh, kickboxing. Yeah, nice. Robert threw up kickboxing. That's something he cool. picked up after 40. Cool. And he fucked up his shoulder and his leg. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did the martial arts thing early in life so I could get that out of my system. Which, so I didn't have to do that when I got old. <laughs> by the way, Dave said, when I hit my 20s, I did a lot of things I was ashamed of as a kid, a.k.a. comic books. Magic the Gathering. And then he says, part of me, my nerd is showing. The stuff that comes in a 
Oh, I'm sorry. He's now referring to wine. Stuff that comes in the uh, box isn't the real thing. <laughs> See, uh, Joe says, I learned that I can write fiction. I didn't start until just a couple years ago because I never thought I could. And this is what we're talking about, which, by the way, Dave says the 46 is fantastic. I don't know if that's his age or it's, it's one of the alcohols. See, and Jewel throws in there Twitch, Discord, and Zoom. And that is, that's a fair thing. Because mm -hmm. when we hit a certain age, we grow resistant to technologies. Just because we've had to change it so many times. I mean, when we were young, we were the only ones in the house that knew how to program the goddamn VCR. Let alone the uh, answering machine. And... Uh, the uh, universal remote. I remember the first time I mm -hmm. saw your universal remote. I picked it up. I looked at it. And I thought, "This changes everything." <laughs> it does. I picked it up. I tried to program it and then threw the goddamn thing across the room. <laughs> Going back to seven remotes. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Robert. Thank you for joining us. Good night, Robert. Um, for myself, a few things that I have learned besides how to run a podcast and a live stream and make covers for my own books, write and publish books. Spray paint art is one of those things. Mm -hmm. Those things you see guys doing on New York City street corners where they've got cans of spray paint and canvas and they make this space scene. I learned to do that because I wanted to. And people are amazed and dazzled by what I did that I'm just like, eh. Um, see, Gary here throws out, I shun tech and especially computers. Got my first IBM ThinkPad computer at 40. Yeah, Gary is one of those guys I can now go to and go, tell me about Unix. Tell me about this. Tell me. And he's being a few years older than me. Um, I think, by the way, so everybody knows, I'll hit 50 this year. And Gary is five years older than me, a handful of years older than me, something like that. And he's a fucking tech guy now when it comes to computers. He knows what he's talking about. The only problem with Gary and his tech is he will not dumb it down for my slow ass so I can understand what he's talking about. <laughs> he's just like, I know shit. Here's shit. And I'm like, shit don't mean nothing to me. Um <laughs> So, uh, is there anything you guys haven't done yet that you want to do? Yes. What, Andrea? I would like to learn how to ski. Really? Water ski? Oh, I thought you was going to show us your little pink. <laughs> oh, I know how. I'm learning that, but that's later. Got to wait <laughs> for that. No, not water ski. Are you crazy? Yeah, well, maybe. What you I would asking? love. I, I want to go ski, and you know, I want to. I want to go to the mountain and get in the snow and go on like the bunny slopes. Yeah, I'll be the guy behind her in the inflatable tube, going down and yelling "we." <laughs> I will That's do that. That's me. Ed, are you willing to do that with us if we go to like Massanutten or whatever it is? <laughs> That's funny. I know it's <laughs> a great fucking name for a ski resort. <laughs> Mass and nothing. Well, Teresa just got the security contract there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, you on the inner tube behind the chick and the skates on the bunny slope. Get him, the fuck. <laughs> and Dave says, I'm young. I obviously have not much to contribute, you old bastard. Sure, you do, Dave. Get well, you, do. why'd you call me that, Dave? Come on now. <laughs> She's not a bastard. She knows her parents. I'm the bastard. <laughs> Ed, bastard would never fit you. Oh. No. I'm sorry. You know your heritage and your. Yeah, your I knew them. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you said what? What's something I want to learn how to do, and that's what I would like to learn how to do. Right. What about you? What is something you haven't done that you want to learn? Uh, I am doing do it? it. I am doing it. Um, I love 
music. In mm. since since I was like in first grade, I started taking music classes, violin and chorus. Did that all the way through elementary and middle school. They took away my violin because they didn't have an orchestra, and I picked up clarinet and I hated it. But I could teach the first chair how to play the hard parts, even though I would like get D's in the class. So, and then of course it was choir and chorus, but I was so shy. I, to publicly perform was horrifying to me. Like in high school, I would take F's if I had to stand in front of the class and they're like, you'll fail the class. I'm like, then I will fail the fucking class. Doug, good to see you, man. Good to <clears throat> see you, Doug. So, now, live on stream, I am learning how to play harmonica. What is that noise? Aw, oh, Trin has showed up with a little host. Hey, Trin, how hey, are Trin. you? Hi, Trin. Um, I am learning how to play harmonica, and I'm going to do blues harmonica. Um, okay. I'm also going to learn how to play Native American flute, bamboo flute, a fife. If you don't know what that is, imagine that piccolo-looking thing that you see in, like, the colonial times. It's essentially a tin whistle in a flute form. Ed'll get that. Anybody who hasn't done Red Fairs will be like, oh, what? You know, hmm. Irish pub? Anyhow. Um, well, that's something you're learning now, right? Right. But I haven't started on the other things and violin. Okay. So this music stuff, because last year I kind of taught myself how to sing. Oh, I was so bad. And I never got good, but I got okay at it. You got better. Yeah, I got to the point where I could actually listen to myself and not go. <laughs> the fuck when it is... comes to music, I, I'd love to learn how to play native drums. No, I have a Boren. Do you need a Boren? Because you could join our No, I band. mean Native American drums. Okay. I'd, I'd, I'd love to get a good quality Native American drum. And Hey, if you're going to learn how to play the native flute, maybe we can have a jam session sometime. There you know, you go. something I just added, didgeridoo. I'm going to learn how to play didgeridoo, too. Okay. That'd be cool. And when you do that, I need a boomerang. You just want to throw shit at me. <laughs> and then have it again to throw it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read a few comments here real quick, guys. Because I, I'm just excited about the idea of, as we get older, we now take the time to learn these things that we always wanted to do that we just never put the time into. So Joe says, I'd love to learn how to make my own book covers. Uh, Gary asks okay. to be printed, like Photoshop and that kind of thing. And Joe says, yup, how to use. So I think that's a valuable skill set to learn and not terribly difficult. Um, it just takes some patience to learn it. Yeah, it does. And by the way, let's trend popped in. Trin is a great friend and a great supporter and a kick-ass moderator here. Um, and here's to our moderators, Trin. but Trin in particular here. Here's to you, Trin. Yeah. I'll drink to that. So, now, it's a damn shame Trin has to go, because I'd be curious. Now, Trin is younger, but what is she learning right now that she wants to learn that she had it when she was younger because this is something people think just because you're in your 20s you're not an old dog yet it all depends on the perspective well. jewel you mentioned something earlier jewel what oh she mentioned discord and all that stuff zoom and yeah well funny story you know some in their 20s, early 20s, saying they're old and wise because we <laughs> took the kids out to dinner the other day for, you know, Travis's son Aiden's 18th birthday. And my kid is 22 and he's like, I want to tell you something. I'm 22. You just turned 18. Cherish this because you can never go back. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. He said one just, day. The 22-year-old said to the 18-year-old, one day you'll be my age and you'll look back and wonder where the time went. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it was cute, but that was so funny. No, like, it was well okay. meant, and we appreciate it that. It was. But I reached it under was. the table and grabbed Andrea's hand and gave it a little, like, a little slightly too tight squeeze of, 
I'm going to say some shit any second now. <laughs> it was a touching moment for them, but I'm like, okay. oh, that's great. By the way, Trin, before heading off to bed, says, I wish I got into construction and building things, but my family and friends always told me that's a guy's job. Instead of baking it's, it's like not, I do. Um, I know women that do it. Yeah, yeah. She came in late. My wife is a hell of a carpenter, Trent. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not a guy's job, and she learned it all from her father. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Dave says it's so weird, but time goes so fast after you're 21 years old. True. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you: is when you're pre 21, you're still living in the moment. You're not planning for the future. You're not watching what comes next and what passed and what you missed and all this. You're just and you don't realize it when you're that young, but you're just living in the moment and enjoying life. Once you're out on your own, you're kind of you you've got to set priorities. And the creative yeah. outlets, the crafts, the skill sets that you might have wanted to do you don't have time to now because you're busy. The the bad thing about it is when you're young and you're starting out, you don't have any fucking money to do yeah. the things you right. want to do. See, that's and then f- once you get older, you have the money, but you don't have the freaking time to do the things you want to do. See, yeah. that's a fair point. One of my viewers here, uh, Joel, I sent him pipes. He wanted mm-hmm. to start smoking a pipe. So I sent him pipes and tobacco, which... Honestly, the stuff I sent him was hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. But for me, not that I had that kind of money to burn, but this stuff was extra. And I could spare it. Um, And you could still do things on the cheap. I mean, the harmonica, I bought two harmonicas to start learning, learning harmonica. One is a $40 one. The other one is a $10 one by the same company. So... You go to McDonald's and you fucking spend $10 for yourself. Mm-hmm. You could buy a goddamn harmonica. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Andrea just started doing something else. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, let's talk oh, about God. that. She's going to show uh, us her little peak. Yeah, baby. Too bad for the mm-hmm. podcast people. They're going to miss it, out on this shit. It's not so little because my fingers are, my hand's too small for mm-hmm. it. Why yeah, am I orange now? You are orange, and you're looking very Princess Leia with your little buns in your hair and your white shirt now that you took your robe off. All right, it's it's warm in here. Okay, so. Yes. I've I've had no musical background because, you know, my family couldn't afford the stuff for me to take music. And chorus is like, "Mm, please don't. I know my singing voice isn't good. And... When I was in my 30s, I took up belly dancing. And she was good and at it. I did that. Mm-hmm. And, and that was fun. And I, I did that, but you know, I haven't done that for a while. So I'm like, okay, I want to do music. And I've been watching these videos, and I've been wanting to do this for a while. And I know it's going to be very difficult. And but she I went finally, for the weirdest thing she could ever go for. I think it's awesome. I mean, what is something that not ever... You don't see too many women doing this. Right. But when you do, you're like... Oh. So she and, bought and a tuba. I saw. No, I'm kidding. No, that would be cool. <laughs> so. It's not a tuba. Be, I'm going to be learning bagpipes. And it is difficult, and I knew it would be difficult, but with my, my hands are small, so it's really hard... I just need more practice, so. No, and I'm like, can, okay, I want we, something different. Can I interrupt different. real quick? Can we raise a glass to Ed real quick? For his what did I do? contribution. <laughs> Here's to Ed, who helped out with this endeavor. Thank you very much. Okay. You're much welcome. Well, see, I was talking to them about it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to save up. Maybe I'll do a fundraiser. I'll do this, and I'm like, really want to do this i really want to do this i've been practicing you know watching the videos and doing the things but you know without the instrument now i have it and it got here a couple days ago and i didn't want one like everybody else had and i did my research 
about the different products. So now, this is my chanter. This is what you learned bagpipes on, and I got a pink one. It's a long pink one, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy. Do you? Hold on. I'm going to interrupt. Dave says, mm -hmm. I play bagpipes. I've played oh. bagpipes. Honestly, the hardest part is learning the breathing with the bag. You can do it, <gasps> Andrea. Um, uh, you're it, local. You're kind of local, yeah, right? He he hangs out uh, at Jersey Cards and Comics with John. And Trina's heading off. I, Let me read her comment real quick. When you change colors, she says Andrea's secretly trying to hide the fact that she's a demon hiding all the red <laughs> evil stuff. Um, Don't tell everybody. Joe, I did not belly dance with Andrea or at all, but I met her the very you first did. time. That's how we met. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is how we met. At a red fair. I've never seen her dance. I've seen pictures, stills, but I've never seen her dance. I have video. She oh, also yeah. does flaming hula hoops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby. I, I have swords because I would I, I would have the sword on my head. I would do all of that too, which is cool. But this is my new endeavor. And, and Dave, you're you're kind of local. I really want to pick your brain because I'm watching videos and I'm doing stuff, and it's really hard for me to find any female pipers that show instruction or someone I could talk to about instruction for hand placement because it's very awkward. I don't know. I have questions. If you want to talk, cool. Need advice. Yay, bagpipes. Okay. So Dave has responded saying, my younger cousin is very good with bagpipes. I'm decent. It is very intimidating compared to what it is to play them. So Dave, at another point in time, Andrea may reach out to you, whether it's dinging you on Discord or here or whatever. Andrea... Trin has asked for a video of you hula hooping in fire. That sounds so cool. Don't have any. Here's what I'm going to tell you, Trin. Next time you visit, I think Andrew. Just you, talk to me next time you, you still visit. have the the stuff, yeah? No. No. Well, no. No. We'll we'll go to Maryland and visit uh Sula Hoops. Mhm. Mm and uh, yeah. But I know you still have belly dance outfits. I right? do. Oh, so next time you visit, mm -hmm. <laughs> not in the middle of winter. It's too cold. It's not in the middle of winter. It's uh, he'll clear out the indoor floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> so Ed, has there been anything you've wanted to do that you haven't? That well, you mentioned the pre-show, and I don't know that we'll ever get around to doing it. I want to hike the Appalachian Trail, and we, we've pretty much decided, even if we do, don't do the whole thing, we're going to do all of Virginia, which is one quarter of the mm -hmm. trail. So That's a lot. I just need to get my fat ass back in shape. No. <laughs> there was something. When did you, how old were you when you started kayaking? Um, 30s, probably. Okay. See, that's uh, went to Nags Head to the beach uh, for vacation, and it's like every other vehicle seemed like they had a kayak on it, and I was like, I want to do that, and came right home and bought a kayak, man, and I have owned as many as seven kayaks at one time. I'm down to two now, but yeah, loved it, took to it right away. Mm -hmm. And he got me into it. I very much enjoyed it. I have since got rid of my kayaks because Andrea is not a water person. So, you know, we're going to go spend time But together. I didn't tell him he can't go. No, no, she I absolutely <laughs> didn't. I just, like, I'm not going to go on an outing and just, like, be like, you guard the tents. We'll be back in six hours. You know. I can do that, though. Well, then it's a possibility. It's <laughs> well, you went on a, with one of our trips. A couple right, of them. Dallas? A couple of them. Yeah, and, and when we used to do the Shenandoah River, there were people that would do that. They'd just stay at the campsite while the rest of us went out on the water. Yeah. See, and that is viable. She just couldn't watch us launch into the water. She... <laughs> water phobia, it's just... Mm. Joe points out, Andrea is a fire person. Fire, fire. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'm more of an earth, stay on dry land person. You know something else 
that I'm going to start doing that I, I have most of the materials. I'll probably pick a couple, couple more. I'm going to learn how to oil paint like Bob Ross. Teresa just started that. Did she really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be something I could bond with her. By the way, it just not that it matters, but his wife and I share a birthday. Mm-hmm. So the exact same day. Yeah. Yeah. There, you know, there's something that we get. Well, mm -hmm. see, because for for um, winter holidays, I got him a bunch of stuff to start doing Bob Ross mm -hmm. paintings. So when we go out there, y'all can paint. Yeah. Ed and I can belly dance. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of belly to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Then they'll come back and be like, why do you oil paint belly dancers? And we're like, really? <laughs> we got a lot of raw footage on our phones, too. <laughs> What's up with that fat guy? <laughs> you know what? That's me, Ed. It's hard to... Don't be cruel. <laughs> well, you know, something that I wanted to learn how to do that I... I started, like, what, last year? Composting. And I did research, and I built a compost pile, and I did all that. And outside where the compost pile is, the grass is beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave says, not related, I play guitar. That's my thing. If you want to collab with harmonica belly dancing, I'm in. Can you Ooh. do some blues type stuff, Dave? Because that's really what I want to focus on with the harmonica in particular. I hear a party coming on. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm here and here if the ground ever fucking dries out, unlike last year. We get a bunch of people here. We get Sula, we get some flame dancers, we get some harmonica and, and guitar going, and some bagpipes. Maybe I'll be able to play something by then. You know what, if we jam Mary Had a Little Lamb for ten minutes, whatever. <laughs> that would whatever. be, like, so cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. It doesn't have to be House of the Rising Sun. It could be whatever. I'm just trying to be able to use the chanter so it doesn't sound like a duck call. It, it, it does. It does. It sounds like a duck call, and I found because my fingers can't cover the holes properly. So, Dave, here here's what I'll tell you. <clears throat> By the end of the year, if I stick to this, I will be pulling up a program I have to run backbeats. And I will lay down some tracks of blues harmonica. So if we have you on guitar, were you really a George Thorogood cover band oh, right up oh. there? No, by the way, oh, that's let cool. me ask you, how long ago was college? I don't need to know your age, but, oh, you know, if that was six months ago, then you're hot and fresh. If it was 20 years ago, well, you got some memories. Well, all blended. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I just love the concept of doing something different. Andrea, as she mentioned, the compost, she's also started gardening. Now that she has well, to learn how to can. Yeah, we're, we are going to learn that this year. <laughs> well, I've done it before, but it's not, not like you guys do. And I've had gardens before, but not like what I'm going to do this year, so very excited she's looking at potential greenhouse stuff now speaking of george thurgood something i i learned later in life or i guess i should say discovered later in life there are good bourbons out there it's true it's true which i just discovered a couple years ago i just known about jim bean and jack daniels which yeah, yeah. i never enjoyed Never, never enjoyed it. it, and you could never get me to drink bourbon because Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. Right. But then I discovered somebody mentioned in a previous episode uh, Woodford Reserve. I actually got <laughs> to visit their distillery. Nice. When I was in Kentucky, passing through Kentucky a few years back, and nice. I had a sip of the bourbon, and I was like, I love bourbons now. Yeah. Screw scotch, which costs. Two hundred dollars a bottle now. I can get a good bottle of bourbon for sixty bucks. Ed, <laughs> Ed, have you tried the Henry McKenna yet? Um, I, I think so. I think with you here at the house one time. Maybe yeah. I might have to bring you a yeah. bottle because it's not a great bourbon, but it's a good bourbon, especially for. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
twenty five bucks. Well, we've done some good bourbons on the oh, show. We have. Uh, uh, I think that might have been one of them. Bowman Brothers. We, mm. we did Bowman Brothers. I got a. I just picked up a bottle of John, John J. Bowman's the other day, and I'd, I'd love to find a bottle of Abraham Bowman's. If there's somebody here that works in a Fredericksburg uh, ABC store that can get me one, um. <laughs> hey, we could just go to their distillery in Fredericksburg. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Once everything opens back up and we can do that. Jefferson's... It might be. Dave says and, try Jefferson's. It's very good. Yeah, Dave, I have had Jefferson's. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I heard is uh, good. Jefferson's is moving on up. Oh, really? To the top. They're going to get a piece of that pie. No, it's the, the east side? side? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Now let's sing uh, let, let's sing the uh, Sanford and Son tune. <laughs> There's no words to the Sanford. I'm hearing it in my head. <laughs> you don't you don't need words. You know what I never realized is this theme song to Welcome Back Kata was actually a song that was on the radio at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't know that. No, I just thought it was the the, the sitcom theme song, and uh, then I like heard it on. Pandora or something like in the past few months. I'm like, wow. Okay. Dave says Abraham is very limited, but if I get any, I will set it aside for you, Ed. Dave, you let us know. I will drive down there and get that shit. Or or you let Andrew and I know. We'll go pick it up and we'll get it. We're a little closer. Most of the bottle to him when we go see him. (laughs) It's expensive, Travis. (laughs) We got PayPal. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> depending That's how right. expensive and how the week is some weeks uh no big deal um and if it's that expensive then you might miss one ounce out of the bottle but if it's that expensive <laughs> i will not be drinking more than that and i might just wait till just i'm sitting in front it. of you so you can share it with me instead absolutely because that will be a more pleasurable experience anyway and that's something else to look at, guys, is learning to appreciate the finer things in life, whether it's a good uh, restaurant. What's that? Uh, I'm with people. Yeah. I was going to say, I really appreciate naps. Mm. <laughs> when I was younger, I did not. <laughs> and she's become quite skilled at them. <laughs> oh. But also, it's something we've tried recently is a fondue restaurant. <sighs> mm-hmm. And it's it, not just melted cheese. Mm-mm. Oh. And I didn't know that. It's expensive compared to going to Outback or Fridays or whatever, but it's an experience. Yeah. You know, and it, it's more than just going out to eat. I mean, I had something that makes me cry every time I have it. Mm. It's worth it. Banana Foster's Fondue. Oh, just tear up. Hey, there's John of Conquest Publishing. Good to see you, Hey, man. John. Oh, crap. I need to pour some more liquor so I can toast John. Exquisite cheese to you, too, John. <laughs> He's got the weirdest greetings, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> John, we were just talking about visiting you. It's, uh, well, at least going down to that area. So, yeah, it's uh, it's worth looking at these things, however old you are, and learning these new skill sets of things that you want to do or experience that you didn't put the time into before. Well, and, and for yeah. some of the, the younger listeners, viewers, that doesn't have a lot of money, because I remember those days. Like, yeah, not too long ago. <laughs> You know, before the kids yes, left and all that stuff. Yeah. Just learning how to be by yourself. That's a skill. In not God, everybody like possesses that. And by the way. Well, not everybody can do it. Be by yourself means turn off the TV. Turn off the just... phone. Ed does this with camping. <laughs> And yeah, it is. It, it's a wonderful reset button of life. It's difficult though, until you do it often. It's difficult. 
it does take practice in this world that we live in nowadays where we have constant input bashing us in the face every moment um, to sit and be by yourself. I mean, try to take an hour drive without the radio going and, and just and try not to be in your head at the same time. Try just to experience the moment. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch row two, dork. Um, John says turning off the boob tube is easy. Yeah, I, I've I've never had a problem. It's part of the reason I enjoy pipes and cigars, because there's times I will go out to the front porch. Same here. And I may turn on music, but it's music without commercials, and I just sit there and enjoy a smoke. Or mowing the lawn on my riding mower. Two hours on a mower with cigars and music. That is a beautiful me moment. Yeah, gardening. I don't need music. Just gardening and nature. I like that. Can't do that right now. Mm hmm. And of the, uh, if the rain levels keep up, there's only going to be like 18 square feet of the yard where you're going to be able to do it. Did It'll be back today? on the porch. Today? We got snow. We got rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we still have snow like in the yard, though. I needed to go out to the shed for something. I'm like, I don't want to swim. So I didn't go out there. John says, gardening, I need $20. I don't understand. Huh? Play, Lucy. That's right. What? It's, uh, it's, uh, let me explain. What you talking about, Willis? No, there is too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> We're pausing a moment and staring at chat going, Yeah. What's that? Oh, John. <laughs> ah, to pay somebody else to do it. And thank you for those bits. Ah. Uh, Kelp <laughs> Dove. <laughs> Come on. X300. Yeah. I was just telling somebody today, I was convinced when I was a kid that the only reason why my dad had children was to have somebody to work the garden. <laughs> How do you feel about it now? I haven't had a garden since I was an adult. <laughs> but your wife wants one well, now, yeah? Or she has one? Yeah, Ter Teresa plants little things here and there now. But that's her thing. Not me. And actually, that's how it is with Andrea and I, too. I have no interest in gardening. But if she wants to garden, I'll, I'll take my art supplies outside and put up the pop-up tent. And uh, I'll do some painting while she's gardening so we can chit-chat the whole time if she wants. Just like I'm not taking care of the yard. That's true. That's true. And again... <laughs> I'll ride the lawnmower once in a while just because it's fun, but... Um, yeah. If the rain doesn't like stop... The yeah. If the rain doesn't let up, ain't nobody taking care of the yard this year. Oh. We're going to have a lovely all-natural bush. <laughs> That's okay, too. It is. That's what she said. It is. And I tell you what, when we let the yard grow up, we get beautiful wildflowers. Mm-hmm. You know, cause... Yeah, he's talking about... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. And the perfume is great. Oh, my God. I have no appropriate sounds to play right now off of my soundboard. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something I recently just did for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I should talk about this on air or not with the climate of things, but I just built my first AR-15. No, I think we could talk about that. Because I know you've been like collecting parts for a while now, yeah? Yeah. And this is something okay. I'm interested in doing also. And then again, Ed, we can also come out here and set up a target in my yard. Oh, cool. And fire in my happen. yard. Yes, we will point it away from the neighbors because... We don't need a competition. Go. <laughs> mm. So, did... Well, 
Go on, yeah. Andrea. I was going to say, well, it's good that on one side is a bunch of trees, on the other side is a cemetery. It's all right. Any way it goes, we've got some place to put bodies. Um, so did you do <laughs> any kind of special paint job or finish? Or I'm probably phrasing yeah, it wrong. Say again? Yeah, I did. I did a special finish on it. I did a camouflage finish on it. and Literally just finished uh, an hour before the show tonight. Do you want to show it off? No. Okay. Fair enough. He can't find it. It's camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I put it. <laughs> so, there is some music I'm learning now. And, uh, you know, I will, I will put down some tracks by the end of the year, probably. Um, so, this is kind of bucket list type stuff but I've always felt like a bucket list shouldn't be a bucket list it should be a to-do list for life not waiting till you're almost out by the way Dave uh, Dave just said piano is easy enough um you need to move the cat you're sounding kind of muffled am I (laughs) (laughs) or do you mean this now Dave are you saying piano comma man is easy enough, or the song piano? Okay, you mean the song Piano Man? It's uh, okay. We can look at that. Heaven knows I can't fucking sing it. I tried. Billy is out of my range. I'd, I'd I I could t- sing it. People ask me not to. I'll just do a good bluesy version, and it's uh, my yeah. my vocal tone is much more Johnny Cash than Billy Joel, but I love Billy Joel. He's probably one of my favorite performers. Ever. It is. He listens to him all the time. <laughs> well, I'll have to look into it because I, I do have a couple books here. and But I'm only on my third practice of harmonica. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I can understand all the songs. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, Dave. It's all good. <laughs> what are you going to say, Andrea? I was going to say, I can understand all the songs you have played. It's I can true. recognize them. They're just not up to speed I yet. To, mm-hmm. I hope to get to that. And, and I was able to get to that on the first time I picked up the harmonica. But it is like London Bridge, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And Doug says, I'm in the process of trying to do something I've wanted to do all my life, creative writing. And that really? is something I do. I don't know how good I am. I mean, if we if we grab my measure of financial success, I suck. If we grab the opinions and feedback I get, I'm pretty good. And I definitely enjoy it. So, you know... But here's the thing. You've done it. And you do it for you. If other people have issues with it, have they done it? It's one thing I always ask That's people how I is, look at it. you know, what do you want to do with this? And then if they're like, now, oh, uh-huh. I was going to say, if Stephen King or one of these big people come to you and say, hey, um, you need to get better or you need to do something, maybe take in consideration, but just an opinion. Well, here's what I do know. As much as so many people loved um, Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, I know I write better than that. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And those weren't... And I think for you, it's just a matter of not... not enough people finding your work. It's, it's that, exposure. It's, it's that simple. Exposure, yeah. That's, uh... That is something that I always tell a lot of people is it doesn't matter how talented you are. You could be the most talented writer out there. If the right people, that perfect storm, doesn't okay. show up, if Oprah doesn't put you on her reading list or whatever, but it just takes that one thing. And I have to remind myself of that often enough, too, is don't stop because you haven't hit a level of success. Mm-hmm. Just keep getting better at it until you do. Right. Right. Well, I've followed what you've been doing over the years, and you are, you're gaining on it. You're, you're getting uh, more exposure, and 
more profit and give it a little bit of time. You're you're progressing. My daughter loves your writing. I've got to get her. Oh, I got hardback books now, Ed. Did I tell you that? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, the right. the portals and Journal of a Stranger are out in hardback now, and I'm going to do okay. Silver and Smith Chronicles in hardback. Okay. Um, a lot of my other stuff, I don't think I'm going to bother to put into hardback because it doesn't quite fit it. If that makes right. any sense. It it does. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, thank but you, definitely Gary. portals. Journal of a Stranger. Yeah. Appreciate that, Gary. Gary threw some bits there. Um, Dave, we appreciate that. <laughs> if you can find me that one thing, I will be a happy man. Uh, my daughter is 32, Joe. Yep, all of our children that we know of... Um, Amongst the three of yeah, us. Yeah, I might have some out there. I don't know. <laughs> walking down the street. Wait, was that me? Nah, I keep walking. <laughs> hey, Andrew, Andrew, did you drop something? Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> Anybody got a pocket knife, pair of scissors? We need to cut this. <laughs> um, welcome to the tavern. So, yeah, all of our kids are now officially adults. Mm. Yeah. Crazy. Hell, I've got grandkids as old as your son, Travis. <laughs> there you go. True story. It's, uh, and and wow. Ed's only like five years older than me. It's I just started later in life. Try six. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's I never remember. You know, it doesn't actually matter until... We're counting numbers. Uh, Dave, I appreciate that. Dave says, uh, I bought Portals. Once I find time, I'll read and review it. Absolutely appreciate that, man. Nice. And no pressure or whatever. Just the more people talking about it, the more people hear about it, the more things happen. And that goes for anything in life. But it's important yeah. to do these things in life for yourself. It's, uh, well, Doug, it's available in ebook, paperback, and now hardback. So hmm. I'm, I'm excited about that. It's uh, it's really neat. It is for me, that's for sure. Though I have realized there's one book I probably should take off market because like Talk of the Tavern six years ago, there's some things you just don't say anymore. And I have a book out there under a pen name that I probably should take down. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't. It's hard to say. Uh, it's, a, it's a pen name. Go ahead. Leave it there. <laughs> it's funny. It's all good, Dave. John says, nope. It's, nope. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very... <laughs> Joe, it's an off-color humor book. It's definitely adult humor humor um so yeah it's uh i'll tell you after the show how about that after yeah after the show yeah <laughs> okay so speaking of the show let's do some closing thoughts here on this whole topic oh, wow. of that old dogs new tricks it, it flies by we did okay ed yeah. you got some closing thoughts on this here Oh, the old cliche. It's never too late to learn. Try it. If if it goes through your head and you want to try it, try it. You know? Try it. Why not? Andrea? Like Nike says, just do it. Mm -hmm. The only one stopping you is you. Maybe money, but mostly you. <laughs> That's true. And also, you could do a lot of this stuff on cheap. You just have to, have to prioritize. Maybe you don't eat out for a couple of weeks. Maybe you don't... Whatever. Whether it's it's kayaking, which can cost a while mm -hmm. to save up that money. Um, but there's always rentals. There is. There is. Um, or camping. If you want to pick up camping as a hobby, it costs a little bit. But... You, you, you space it out. Start buying your shit in the winter. 
So by the time the spring gets there, you've got what you need. Um, find mm-hmm. some friends to do this with. If it's a musical instrument, they're not always cheap. I chose something inexpensive to start with. Um, but once I move to violin by the end of the year, I, I'm going to get food's a good hobby. John, you're not wrong. Eating well and appreciating the finer things in life, whether it's a good bourbon or eating fondue or whatever, <clears throat> it's worth experiencing those things. But go into these things for the experience. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to enjoy them more, no matter what the end result is. It's your enjoyment and appreciation for it. And that's so important for anything in life because when you leave, Music is great, both on a path of lifelong hobby that's enjoyable. I'll agree to that. Thank you for those Positivity bits, Dave. Cheer. Absolutely. X300. Okay. Music is great, you both are on a path to a lifelong hobby that is enjoying L. <laughs> I love that Cogsley read it off as it <laughs> Okay, let's wrap this up. Um, let's let's get a closing toast here. We'll do two again. We'll do one from us and one from Cogsley. Um, coffee is my hobby. That's actually a great hobby and andrea recently got an espresso machine and it's changed her way she enjoys that hobby i experienced that, that espresso machine yeah you did mm-hmm. you did and ed's not a coffee connoisseur by any means but he noticed the damn difference yeah absolutely you know and and then he the was jittery for the next 12 hours <laughs> yeah. um yeah it's never too late if you have a passion that you haven't tested yet, make it happen. That's all there is to this. Here's to enjoying those things wherever you are in life. Now, let's see what wise words Cogsley can throw up for us. <clears throat> no, we Cogsley, we already had that one earlier. Let's not do that one again. Damn it. Fucking bots are so underrated. Now he's going to make me wait. He's like, no, we, we got a timeout. We... There we go. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. And that's a quote from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Here's mm-hmm. to that. I'll go to that. Yeah, I like that guy. Okay, let's do some outro shit. Um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. Don't forget, you can email us at talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. That's talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. Let us know your passions that you're exploring at this point in time in life. Um, What new tricks you're learning, you old dog. And uh, you can also let us know if it's your birthday or somebody else's birthday that you'd like us to read out those birthday wishes on air or just a special message of, you know, screw you, I hate you, you're a... Nope, let's not do that. Um, Thank you, everybody, for throwing all the bits, subscribing, supporting the channel, the podcast in all the ways, downloading the podcast, listening to it and telling your friends about it. Always appreciated. And thank you for the financial support through subs and bits and Patreon and PayPal and every other thing. Let's get out of here and see what the next show brings next time. Have a great one, guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good, good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night.